بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈے واٹ ٹو ڈے وی دا ٹاپک آف دا ریلیشن شپ بٹوین فور ایئر سیریز کو ایفیشنٹس نا فرسٹ لیٹ می ایکسپلین دی میننگ آف دا ٹاپک دا میننگ آف دی ہیڈنگ وی ہیو یو نو ٹو ٹائپس آف فور ایئر سیریز دیٹ وی اسٹڈیڈ دا کمپلیکس ایکسپرینشیل فور ایئر سیریز ان دا ٹراگرامیٹرک فور ایئر سیریز in which we had complex exponential Fourier coefficients and these are the trigonometric Fourier coefficients. What is the relationship between these two? You know, if you are given, let's say you are given these uh, uh, trigonometric Fourier coefficients and you are asked Fourier uh, complex exponential Fourier coefficients what to do. Similarly, if you have four complex exponential coefficients and you have to convert them into trigonometric coefficient, what would be the case? So that is what we see in this particular video. Fine. The, the, the complex exponential Fourier series uh, was written as what? Let me write over here the complex exponential Fourier series. It was written as x of t is equal to the summation k running from a negative infinity to positive infinity a k exponential of j k omega naught t. Fine. Similarly, the trigonometric Fourier series, the, the, the trigonometric Fourier series was written as what? That my x of t was equal to the DC term A0 plus the summation n running from 1 to infinity uh, An cos of n omega naught t plus summation n running from 1 to infinity bn sine of n omega naught t is that clear that is so this was the complex exponential Fourier series this was the trigonometric Fourier series now you know uh, that uh, for cos and sine how to represent them right you know but let me write it cos of uh, omega naught t or let's say n omega naught t is an exponential of j n omega naught t plus exponential of negative j n omega naught t and this is whole divided by 2. Similarly, the sine of n omega naught t is equal to exponential of j n omega naught t minus exponential of negative j negative j n omega naught t and this is divided by a 2 j. So this is what I am going to apply over here. In cause of n omega naught t, I am going to put that. Sine of n omega naught t, I am going to put that. Fine, so which means that I am expanding, I am breaking my trigonometric Fourier series. So you could say that my x of t is equal to a naught is a DC term plus you have summation n running from 1 to infinity a n and you could also say you know I take the two also common because so n by 2 is let's say the coefficient what would be inside exponential of j n omega naught t plus exponential of negative j n omega naught t fine then you have this term so you have the plus the summation is from n running from 1 to infinity you have a b n and let me take the 2 j common as well outside so in this case what do you have exponential of j n omega naught t minus exponential of negative j n omega naught t this is what you have fine now what do you do is what do you do is if you have a look so if i combine the this is a product this is a summation right you know this if i combine the similar frequency terms and what are those similar frequency terms so you have an exponential of n omega naught t similarly over here you have an exponential n omega naught then you have a negative j n omega naught t over here you have a negative j n omega naught t over here what if i combine them so if i say that my x of t is equal to a naught the dc term plus a n upon 2 you know this right so so i would write a summation n running from 1 to infinity so a n upon 2 plus b n by 2 j and that term so uh, wait let me see a n upon 2 is this one you have it exponential this summation a n upon 2 with, with this one as well if you say you want to break it, if you're not, uh, you know, feeling comfortable with the direct step, let me break it. Let me break it. 
so you have an a n upon 2 over here you have an exponential of j n omega naught t plus then you have a summation of n running from 1 to infinity you have an a n upon 2 again exponential of negative j n omega naught t then you have a summation n running from 1 to infinity you have a b n upon 2 j exponential of j n omega naught t then you have a minus summation n running from 1 to infinity b n upon 2 j exponential of negative j n omega naught t so this was the step that i was skipping so anyways now you would be more crystal clear that i have a naught and now i combine the similar frequency terms j n omega naught t j n omega naught t the summation is common the summation is both from n running from 1 to infinity right so i take the coefficients common a n by 2 plus b n upon 2 j and this is this is with exponential of j n omega naught t similarly if you have then a plus summation of n running from 1 to infinity now you have exponential of j n omega naught t j n omega naught t a n by 2 minus a n by 2 minus b n upon 2 j with an exponential of negative j n omega naught t and is that clear till here fine now what could be the next step the next step could be that i write my x of t as what a naught plus the summation n is running from 1 to infinity 1 over 2 i take outside 1 over 2 i take outside i have what a n minus j b n i can write it j gets up you have an exponential of j n omega naught t fine then you have what a summation n running from 1 to infinity 1 upon 2 is again common you have an a n minus j would go up plus b n j b n plus j b n minus j b n plus j b n exponential negative j n omega naught t fine now if this is with the plus n term so can i represent this coefficient as a c n positive n if this is plus n so that would definitely would be minus n or if you can see from here the frequency is also negative so this i could say this is a negative c n fine so i would write over here is that my c n is equal to uh, what my c n is equal to 1 upon 2 yes now this i have got till here but how do i know how do i know that this is the same thing as the complex exponential fourier series because over there have a look you are summating it from negative infinity to positive infinity fine you have a dc term this is over here you are summating it from positive infinity to from one to infinity that's the left side that's the right side for what for the left side from a negative infinity to minus one so this is basically that thing because your n is negative your n is negative so this is basically that thing or if you don't trust it if you don't trust it so you could say that if n if you replace uh, n by a negative p or if you say that a negative p is equal to n so what would be the case in that particular way then you would have that x of t would be a naught plus summation n running from 1 to infinity you would have 1 upon 2 or, or let me write a cn exponential of j n omega naught t and then you would have what you would have a plus summation would be from a negative infinity to negative one and you would have what uh, c p now let's say c p is a new uh, variable c p you would have an exponential of j p omega naught t so have a look what have you got you have got the dc term you've got the summation on the positive side you've got the summation on the negative side so what does this mean can i not write it like this so can i not write it like this that my x of t is equal to what the summation from n running uh, n running from a negative infinity to positive infinity c n exponential of j n omega naught t so have a look is this not the same fourier series that we've been using so what do do what did i do i took the trigonometric fourier series and i proved it equal to the exponential Fourier series the variables n and k of course does not matter it could be n it could be k it could be anything we have proved that these two things that we are naming complex exponential Fourier series and 
the trigonometric Fourier series are one and the same thing. Is that fine till here? And I did not write the relations. So let me remove this place. Let me you know, remove this. What do I have? The relation were what? My Cn was this thing. 1 over 2. My Cn was 1 over 2 An minus J times Bn. Similarly, my C of minus N was 1 upon 2 An plus j times bn and my c0 was equal to a0 is that fine now what are these c's so c's are this thing if i could you know mention this with a c mention this with a c if i mention this with a c so then you would have a proper view or if i mention this with an a if C and no, if I'm writing about an A, K. No, C is fine. C is fine. C is fine. So this is what you have. Okay. Now, this thing that I did was for, for exponential to trigonometric, right? This was when I am moving from exponential to trigonometric, exponential to trigonometric. Now, if I have the next case, that is if I am moving from trigonometric to exponential. So, what would be the case in that case? So, if I write them over here. So, what do I have is basically my CK would be complex my cn or ck or whatever you write it to be so if my cn if i'm writing cn is generally complex right so which means that this a uh, cn would be equal to the real part of cn plus the imaginary part of cn won't it be like this right and what do i have is uh, that cn cn we wrote as what cn we wrote as 1 upon 2 so i would write it as 1 upon 2 a n minus 1 upon 2 j b n so this is equal to the real part of cn plus the imaginary part of cn so what do I have is if I compare these two so the real part of cn is equal to half of a n real of cn is half of an which i could say that an if i want to calculate this would be twice the real of cn so i would write it over there if i need to calculate an from cn this would be twice the real part of cn this is what it is similarly if you have a look so the imaginary part of cn this is equal to negative 1 upon 2 times bn. j represents the imaginary part. So if I need to calculate bn, I would have to multiply the imaginary part of cn by a negative 2. So if I need to calculate bn, I have to calculate, I have to multiply the, the imaginary part of cn with a negative 2 is that okay and of course we know that the value of a naught would be equal to c naught a naught is of course equal to c naught so that is it what did we do basically in this video in this video we did was that if we are given tri exponential exponential what Fourier coefficients how can we relate it to the trigonometric Fourier coefficients and similarly then we if we are given trigonometric Fourier coefficients how do we convert it to exponential how do we relate it with the exponential coefficients so that is it that is it about this video and you would be noting that i am stretching this Fourier series topic very much and this is because this is a basic topic and once you understand this you would understand the Fourier transform very easily so I believe I make one more video in which I, you know, compile everything that we have studied uh, about the uh, uh, continuous time Fourier series. I will try to make it if it is necessary. 
and if it's not necessary so we'll directly jump into the discrete time Fourier series so see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah maybe with a new topic or maybe with the same continuation till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do remember me in your prayers goodbye